Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is KPZ and you are here on the home of the slightly above average ship review. Today I have got a new premium in the port. The Royal Navy Tier 5 premium aircraft carrier, the Ark Royal. Now, I just want to mention one thing. I think Wargaming is going to start introducing lots of OP premiums to get people to buy them and then they are going to nerf them after the fact and i think the ark royal is case number one here we are on warrior's path we are down to here in the ark royal and if you've never used a carrier before and you're thinking about doing it uh, the ark royal is kind of like easy mode for carriers and let me tell you why it has one little teeny weakness it has lots of strengths one of the strengths is these carpet bombers, which uh, have a really big aiming circle that allows you lots of leeway to mess up and still get results when you're dropping on the enemy ship. So my advice to you is if you do get the Ark Royal or any Royal Navy carrier, build into the carpet bomb slash HE bombs because they are uber powerful as you will see. But yeah, I think this is purposely released in an overpowered state, like most premiums will be. Um, here we have to do a dry run. Um, one of the weaknesses of this uh, carrier, the planes don't have a good spotting range. We didn't see that destroyer in time to get that green aiming circle over him. So we had to do a dry run on our first bomb drop. Here we're going back for number two. But anyway, I'm just predicting they're going to nerf this thing at some point. All right, going in for the bomb drop, you can see, try to get the aiming circle where the destroyer's going to be going. Not necessarily very accurate, but we get one bomb hit and one fire, and even though the rest of the bombs didn't hit, we got two incapacitations. I don't know, maybe it set the soda machine on fire or something. All right, going back in for one more bomb drop here, you can see destroyer captain evasive maneuvers. Not really in the meaty part of that green circle. Two more bomb hits, one more fire, and we force him to activate a smoke screen. So that's why I say this carries easy mode. It's easy to take out or target destroyers with these carpet bombs, or bomb any ship for that matter, and have a positive effect as opposed to other HE bombers of other nations carriers which are as accurate, don't give you as much leeway. Maybe with the exception of the tier 3 Soviet much carrier large. which has a similar drop circle for the HE bombs. Maybe aside from that there isn't any other carrier that can do this kind of thing. Now don't get me wrong, I think the Soviet carriers are strong. I just happen to think that the Royal Navy carriers are a little more forgiving because of this Carpet bombing for new players, so if you are new to carriers or new to premium carriers, then uh, I suggest the Royal Navy to start off if you haven't gotten any other ones already. Simply because you can do your job really easily targeting enemy destroyers, at the very least spotting them for your team, and then secondly spotting and damaging other ships. Preferably the ones that don't have good AA values. All right, you can see our uh, full sortie of nine airplanes here. Half of them are damaged. We got black smoke, gray smoke, white smoke, every color smoke that there is. So I went over here looking for a destroyer, but I was like, you know what? All my planes are shot up. Nagato doesn't have great AA. Let's go take out the Nagato, or at least target it with an AG bomb drop. So here come the carpet bombs. This is going to be okay. Um, and we get a bunch of hits and set them on fire. And then we'll just come back around. I, I find that these airplanes are not very maneuverable in the air. They take a long time to swing around and get back on target. Maybe that's just me. Um, but we're going to line them up here. This drop even better into the meat. And we set another fire and get a bunch of assorted hits there. Alright, so uh, originally 
I'm going to have to straighten out the, the, uh, the runway lead. here. You really don't want in any carrier to be launching away from the battle space. So if it means you got to take control of your ship a little bit to get the runway pointed in the right direction, do that. I want to say I think we had to turn around or readjust because, you know, Wargaming still can't figure out how to spawn these things and they spawn me out in the middle of nowhere. All right. So another strong point about the Ark Royal is that its planes recharge very quickly. As you can see, we just finished doing a bomber run and already we have 12 airplanes back on deck. So we went over here because saw our teammate being targeted with torpedoes. And I'm looking for a destroyer to see if I can maybe drop some torpedoes on them. I will note these torpedoes are exceptionally slow. Exceptionally slow, so keep that in mind. It would be really embarrassing to be killed by one of these torpedoes. Here's the destroyer. We're just going to throw the torpedoes in the water. And someone is now really embarrassed. Kill number one. Enemy destroyer blown up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the torpedoes are just 35 knots, kids. So make sure you're shooting them. They're very slow, not maneuverable target. Here is an example of me trying to do a torpedo drop against a Perth. I thank everybody for watching my Perth video. Perth is too agile to get caught with these torpedoes. Even though we have that drop uh, half narrowed up as much as we could, the Perth is just going to turn away and evade that stuff. So, uh, Meanwhile, taking a look at the scoreboard, we have lost five ships. The enemy just lost their third ship. So we're kind of up against it here, but you're never out of it when you're in a carrier that's as easy to use as the Ark Royal. All right, so the closest target appears to be the California. Fire as the everybody target. should know, the California can get an AA rating of over 100 if built properly. So I'm really going into the teeth of the defense here. I think that's a picture for the drop. And don't set a single fire. Nine bomb hits, if I'm reading that correctly. No fires. All right. Well, we'll go back to the Perth here. And line him up with a pretty good drop. And set him on fire with just three bomb drops. So RNG must not have liked me very much when I was there against California. Quick note, anytime you're going into an enemy ship and you're interlocking fire, AA fire from two enemy ships, you're going to tear your planes up. So try to avoid interlocking fire if you can when you're doing these drops all right we got the perth out there we got the california out there the perth just got nice killed work. we got the california and this other ship over here to the right is a war spite b i am targeting the war spite b with my very slow torpedo bombers plus you get a little too close for comfort there i was like yo i need back up so we're going to move in here, we're going to set that drop. You want to drop as close as you can with your torpedoes still being active. That's just my opinion with these torpedoes because they are so slow. Although we missed two, we only got one hit. No flooding, but we're going back for more here on the war spite. And I think this commander is trying to back the war spite up. And so uh, I'm going to aim to the rear of the war spite. Get it all nice and snugged up there and let those go. And then I think we're just going to say, let's come back to the third. One, two, three torpedo strikes. I was going to try to drop one last torpedo at the California. Waited too long. Got shot down. Oh well. All right. We're in full backing up mode now. So I can immediately sortie back out with my HE bombers. And this is the first instance of where I didn't have a full flight waiting for me on the deck when a flight took off, Roger. I think, in this battle. So just kind of a side note on how important that recover, recharge rate for your airplanes is. Um, so we got five torpedo planes and one HE bomber on the deck right now. We'll check back in at the end of this sortie. All right, so we're going out looking for a destroyer. Saw some torpedoes coming at my teammate over there. Uh, the blue battleship, I think it might be a Nagato. So I went over here with the purpose of locating the destroyer because I got the carpet bombs. I'm ready to take him out. Even though 
not very good at spotting, so we're seeing that. Don't know where he is. So I'm just like, you know what? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. We are going to go after the bird in the hand here, which is the worst fight. Setting up our carpet bomb drop here. Not too shabby if I say so myself. We set two. Count them two fires. I gotta tell you, in every match I've played with the Ark Royal, except for one where the enemy team ran up the middle and got killed by the shore right away. Uh, I've set two fires in every game except for that one. Here, that bomb drop. Uh, we still get a hit out of it. So even though I couldn't get the aiming circle in the right place, we just dropped because we had to, um, can still get hits on target there. So even that one was not a waste. All right, going back with just two airplanes. That's all I got left here. And we are going to do one more drop on the worst bike for good measure. That's a pretty well-aimed drop. And we set another fire on the war spite. So that's how you take these ships out. You set them on fire, they damage gone. You set them on fire again, they burn them. Alright. We did hit the back of the map. We are going to start to move forward. And so this appears to be... Is this a full sortie still? Alright, we got another full sortie. So we started with five torpedo planes in our last sortie on the deck. And we recovered four more, enough to get a full flight. So we're still getting full flights of planes this deep into the match. That's why that recharge rate is so important. Here we're moving on, on the California again, braving that high value AA. He doesn't have a lot of hit points left. We lined it up to the max uh, closeness of this drop angle. We also spotted the destroyer, the Akatsuki. You know, we take out the California. Yes, sir. Uh, but even if you don't take out the destroyer like we're trying to do here, just spotting him for your team is so important, and I cannot stress that enough. And my teammate takes out the Akatsuki because I had him spotted out. Alright, so look, we're going to look back. We already have nine HE bombs on the deck. Um, but just the Serov is left, and really when you're attacking another carrier, torpedoes, I think, are a better way to go. Except for maybe the German carriers, maybe. So we're going to head out with these torpedo bombers. But again, remember I talked about the planes don't have a very good spotting range in my opinion for these carriers. So we're going to search around here and try to find the Serov. And I'm uh, not being very successful. I thought he might be behind some of these islands over here. And uh, long story short, he was not. So while we're flying around looking for the Serov, let's recap the strengths of the Ark Royal. The carpet bombers are great. A lot of wiggle room on the damage there. Great at taking out destroyers. That should be your number one target when you have the carpet bombers up in the air. Number two, the recharge rate of these airplanes is pretty quick. And I think that's super beneficial, especially when you get late in the match. You don't want to be setting up abbreviated or short sorties with just half the amount of planes if you can avoid it. Uh, weak sides about the Ark Royal, I don't think the concealment is very good, although it is in one respect because of the commander's base trait. Um, the spotting range of the airplanes is not so great. Uh, the torpedoes are uber slow. Uh, you can still get kills. I mean, I think two of our kills are from the torpedoes. So maybe uh, it's somewhere, something like the enemy underestimates your torpedoes and they can get kills with it. You know, uh, but all in all, we're one of the last surviving ships. We've done a pretty respectable amount of damage. I would say the average damage in my games in the Ark Royal is about 75k. So we're at that average damage right now. And then we're moving in on this torpedo drop on the Sarah. And again, you got to get it all snugged up there. He doesn't appear to be moving. So we're just going to get it as close as we can. Drop it. And those planes are post. So we're going to let those torpedoes go. We are moving forward because we know what's left. We do get three torpedo strikes and start a flood. He auto damage cons that. Uh, and I don't think we're going to get back over there in time. Also want to note uh, the legendary skill. I think it's called the, the, the Vault or something like that, is up on the screen. 
And that requires a friendly ship to be in close proximity to you. So thank you to my remaining teammate who moved close to me. Plus, we have interlocking AA fire on any attacking airplane. And I will tell you, I think the AA of the Ark Royal, at least with my build, is pretty respectable. Gotten a couple clear sky medals in different matches that weren't as exciting as this one. So you aren't going to get to see them, but maybe a future game. Uh, I definitely think this is a cracking capable carrier, uh, simply because the effectiveness of the carpet bombs. Uh, so we're not going to get back over there. Time is going to run out. But if you are interested in carriers or two five, uh, I think the Ark Royal is the best one going right now. Here we are on the victory screen. 89,275 total damage. Nine torpedo strikes. Looks like 51 bomb hits. Shot down six enemy planes, three kills, eight fires. And we ended up with just short of 320,000 silver and 4203 ship XP and commander XP in the Ark Royal. Yep, I'd put it uh, above the Independence and above the Zwiho. And if there's another tier five carrier, I don't know what it is. So I'd put it above that one too. All right, 2155 base XP with those three big kills. We did not finish at the top of our team. But all in all, I think down here that is a respectable effort. Or maybe it's just bolstering my belief that this carrier is easy mode, easy to use. Maybe Ouija is going to nerf it. And then when it does, I will be back to say I predicted they would nerf it. Just as I'm predicting they're continue to introduce overpowered premiums to get people to buy them. And then they're going to nerf them after the fact and keep your money. So caveat emptor. That's Latin. May the buyer beware. Hopefully I remembered the right words. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's been a long time since I spoke Latin. Or right, let's go into the port, take a look at the ship. Uh, modification number one, flight control mod increases that aircraft restoration rate or makes it restore quicker. That's what I meant. Uh, mod two, AA guns mod 2, I think that is vitally important for any carrier. Consumables, got an automatic damage con and four charges of the automatic fighter. We did not run any booster flags, got this Type 9 permanent camouflage. And of course, the Duck of War flag. 44,500 hit points and a 25% torpedo damage reduction with our build. In terms of the aircraft, both sets of planes are Fairy Swordfish. The Torpedo Bombers, max damage 5,300 with 35 knot speed and a range of 3 kilometers. The Dive Bombers is where it's at, folks. These ones have a max damage of 3825. I believe that is per bomblet and a 29% fire chance. You saw we didn't have any problem getting hits and we didn't have any problem setting fires here in the Ark Royal. Artillery, kind of an odd caliber, 113 millimeters. Got eight by twos. They fire out to four and a half kilometers, five second reload time, 1600 HE shell damage with an 11% fire chance. So not particularly long, long range, I would not spec into those. AA defense, um, as you can see, the secondaries do reach out to 6.7 kilometers. In my opinion, that's vitally important getting the range of the AA as long as you can on any carrier, because if you're getting attacked, you need to start taking out the enemy planes as soon as you can. The 40, mil 40 millimeter Vickers do the most damage per second. Those have a range of 3.4. And then uh, the 12.7s, they don't really do a whole lot. They don't reach very far. Yada, 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 yada. All right, moving on to maneuverability. 31 knots, so it is not slow. 990 meter turning circle, that's rather large. 12.8 second rudder shift time. I'd say that's pretty fair for a ship of this size. All right, and moving on to concealment. 11.9 on the surface, 8.4 from the air, and a two kilometers guaranteed detectability. You'll see why those numbers are so vastly different in a minute. All right, if you are targeting an Arc Royal, the center part of the ship, that's the island and the smokestack there sticking up off the deck. And directly under that smokestack is the highest part of the citadel. So unlike other carriers where you want to aim more towards the rear with this carrier, you're aiming directly in the middle under that island and smokestack 
to attack the Citadel. All right, looking at the bow plating, 19 millimeters, and I'll just go ahead, spoiler alert, most of the armor on the Ark Royal is between 19 and 21 millimeters thick, except for the island and the smokestack. So we'll add it all back on, even the deck, 19 millimeter plating, and then uh, the island, I think it's 10. Yeah, superstructure, 10. So that's that. So underneath there, a little bit above the waterline should be a good hit. All right, here is Dennis Boyd. Why is the carrier so hard to spot from the air? Because Dennis Boyd's base trait is called Under the Radar, which decreases the air detectability range of whatever ship he's being used on. So that is very nice. We threw in Ernest King to increase the egg gun firing range and Jersey Swirsky to give us a little bit of concealability. Row one, no fly zone, increasing that AA range. That is a must, in my opinion. I got to admit, I would I will, would not use Stronghold in the future. Even the, though the torpedoes are very slow, I'm going to switch it to one-way ticket and not use Stronghold. Out of sight in row three, that helps the skip bombers, uh, less detectable and more hit points uh, because that's the bread and butter of this ship. Hidden threat, again, um, I'm building into the strengths, and I also wouldn't use on alert, rudder shift time, and incoming fire indicator. You're going to be flying in a plane, dude. You don't need that. Just saying. All right, row th four, look at me now. If that was a row two skill, I definitely would have selected it, but it's not. So when compared to burn, baby burn, increases the fire chance and does more damage for the AG bombs. That is a must. Legendary skill, the vault, gives you some more hit points, give your uh, planes more hit points, pardon me, and reduces incoming damage when an ally is close to you. And you would choose this simply because fully packed is going to give you one extra fighter plane. And that's not worth it. Not worth the trade-off, in my humble opinion. Anyway, that is the slightly above average review of the Ark Royal. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up. I'm going to separate out these premium carriers into their own playlist so you can go there if you pick up any other premium carrier that I have and see a review for it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button.